three, and I don't think they've had this kind of buzz for a home game since maybe going back to that Michigan State game that they played out here about three or four years ago. Yeah, you can feel it, but the Ducks fans not necessarily convinced they're contenders. They want to see it tonight. Oregon won the toss and deferred, so Stanford gets the football. Cameron Scarlett from two yards deep. And he's tripped up out across the 20-yard line. And he's got a lot of huge targets to work with. Yeah, he offense. does. I, I think this kid's a future superstar. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. We had him late last year at home against Notre Dame. And I think he gave us glimpses that night of what he can be. Really compliments the running attack, the big line, Bryce Love. And as you said, he's got some big targets on the outside. And we'll talk more about his receivers and tight ends as the game goes on. But that's an advantage for Stanford to put the ball up in the air to the big guys. Yeah, you mentioned it. How will Oregon sell out to stop Bryce Love in this running game the way that San Diego State and USC did? Love has got it in the first play. They have not really been able to create a huge push in the middle. Big difference. They get Jesse Burkett, the veteran center back. He missed the first couple of games. He's a big difference maker for this group. And the right guard, Herbig, is an outstanding player in the left tackle. Also little. You can see Love. Really, the, the big tight ends with Smith and Parkinson and Arcega Whiteside also. A physical matchup. It's a nightmare. It's 6'3", 225 pounds. It's very strong hands. Look at this lineup. You get Nick Wilson, the guard, lined up as fullback in front of Bryce Love. They're overloaded to the left here. And stutter step. Love scoots for a short gain. It'll set up third and three against this Ducks defense that has a lot of new faces. Take a look at Jalen Jelks. I think he's their best defensive player, projected as a first-round pick. Yeah, Jelks at 97. Keep an eye on him. This is a challenge on the back end. Thomas Graham's their most talented corner, number four, and they will move him around, try to keep him the best they can on our Sega White side for the matchups. Cardinal has struggled so far this season on third down. They're 103rd in the country, just 33%. They need three. It's loud already. Love on a delay. First down. And Bryce Love out near the 40-yard line. Watch, running back. Watch Fanake come around the left guard. Nice kick out block on the linebacker die. That's what really opened it up and, and gave Bryce Love enough room there. There's a nice block there. That left guard spot been a little bit of a revolving door with he and Devery Hamilton. But he starts the game off very well with a nice block on the linebacker Troy Dye. Those 13 runs last season of 50 plus yards. That's mind boggling. He's got one so far. Scarlett spelling love offset and Costello looks to throw on first down flips it short at Scarlett who is hit immediately and knocked down the ball is out there's a scrum and they calling this a fumble trying to unpile it Scarlett was hit hard after the catch he, he was down ball came out after his body hit the ground and if anything he was juggling the ball He's down, then the ball pops out. Troy Dye, the linebacker, popped him. And that's tough against these taller wide receivers and tight ends. Love. The crease closes down quickly, and again, the Cardinal will face a third down and three. Carried it four times already. Yeah. Look at all these big bodies out Look there. Look at it. How can it not be? Look at the linemen, the tight ends. Like you said, Nick Wilson wearing 54. Reagan Williams is the fullback. Costello dealing with all this noise, and the play clock is winding down. They got to hurry. Just snap it. Love has to bounce it. A flag comes down. He will be tripped down right at the first down marker at the 48. We'll check the flag in the backfield. I think it's a false start. Holding offense number 73. 10 yard penalty. Play for it would have been a first down, so they'll take the ten. They go to the right. They're pulling the guard around. They want the ball to go here, but Jordan Scott right here blows up the center Burkett, and that's who's holding. You can see he, there's nowhere for Bryce Love to go. He wanted to go to the right, but because of the strength of Scott at 6'1", 330, he gets into that backfield. Bryce Love has to bounce it to the left, and there's no blockers. 
Big 330 pounder from Florida. Monster. But now it's third and 13. Three receiver look. Costello looks down the seam, throws it to the tight end, and it's incomplete. Going up was Colby Parkinson. Very well defended. Holy cow. I think Parkinson makes a play on that football, and that's a first down. But I'll tell you what, Troy Dye at 6'4", is a middle linebacker, his length, ability to get back and go up and not give up on the play. Parkinson's hands, both his hands are on the ball. Watch Dye right there separate him from the football. Great effort there by the veteran in the middle. Hugo Amati, their defensive leader and a fine punt returner. Will single a late fair catch. Justin Herbert, the local hero, very cerebral, smart guy, a perfectionist by nature, learning to become a more vocal leader. He'll operate behind an offensive line with four juniors and the sensational Panay Sewell. They beat Alabama and everybody else on a left tackle. Day one starter, Kirk. Yeah, he is a talented player and at this skill. I mean, they've got great speed, especially number 13, Dylan Mitchell. He's got what it takes to be able to get separation. He and Jalen Red. A rotate about five different tailbacks. Tony Brooks James, the senior, gets the start, but Herbert looking to throw in first down. It's a low throw. Dylan Mitchell, their leading receiver from a year ago, went down low, and they pick up eight. Yeah, and Stanford's up front, their front seven, what they've really been known for. This has now become a more experienced group from where they were the last couple years. They've got some people. Malik Antoine is in tonight for Ben Edwards. We'll keep an eye on that secondary. It'll be ta Talon. It there's a keeper from the quarterback. They haven't run him a lot this season, but you can see the speed you talked about in the open, and Herbert moves the six to the 40. Yeah, they, they give a little counteraction to the right and then come back with Herbert. And as you said, Chris, he can go at 6'6", 240. And again, I think that'll be a big part of their attack tonight. You got 14 yards. And they want to go tempo, but they also use that tempo to their advantage. That time with the clap, kind of a... A dead call there to try to see what Stanford might be in, see if they tip their hands. Stack receivers on both sides. They throw it into heavy traffic, and this is Jalen Red, the speedy little guy at Rancho Cucamonga. He will stretch you horizontally and vertically with yeah. the strength of his arm. That's exactly right. That's their plan. They, they use kind of a mix of what Baylor used to do, Oklahoma State, some of Chip Kelly. They spread you as far as they can with their formations and, of course, with the arm strength of Justin Herbert. Hand it off. Brooks James is hit hard and knocked down for a short loss. Flying in there was Elijah Holder off the corner. Yeah, Elijah Holder and Jordan Fox. I mean, those are great players, but I, I just think that there's enough veteran leadership on this defense that's been not necessarily there the last few years. This, this defense on paper, we'll find out tonight, but I think they're better than they've been in recent years because of that experience. So you lose a couple, and I think they're okay. Bobbled snap on third and ten. Herbert looks downfield and fires wide open. Dylan Mitchell weaving through the secondary. Still going down to the seven. And the Ducks sprinting down as they strike with a strong arm throw. Well, the safety this time, Malik Antoine, actually three, sinks into the middle of the field, and Murphy, I think, was expecting help from behind, and he never got it. 53 yards, sets up the first and goal, and walking in, Tony Brooks James. Oregon strikes first. Backed up on third long, that huge pass play sets up an easy touchdown for Brooks James. 209. It took him to cover 82 yards. Adam Stack, who missed the first three games with injury, kind of muscles the conversion through. Well, we're already seeing the skills of Herbert in the first drive. How about that? Six plays, 82 yards. Good job by Herbert here holding on to it. Had enough time to make that throw downfield. We told you Mitchell has the speed. And you know what? Oregon's coaches challenged this team to be more physical this year. Look at the left side of that offensive line. The tight end Jacob Breland blowing up the Stanford lineup. It's Jordan Williams and a field goal winner. That snapped Oregon's 13 game winning streak. Spoiled their chances of getting to the BCS championship game. David Shaw's team has 
bullied the Ducks the last couple of years. 49-7 a year ago, but Oregon has struck first at home. Emerson to Scarlett, who will take a knee this time. That is what I do is play football, but I feel like just being able to contribute to the world and um, just being there to take care of others would be amazing. It's about you wanting to be the best for everybody around you. Hopes to be a doctor someday, but after a long productive career in the NFL, he could have gone, but I'll we'll show you his quote on why he returned for this season. Can Love and Costello and the Cardinal answer? This Oregon crowd gaining belief quickly here. It's Bryce again. Tried to bounce it, now it cuts it back. You, know, you, you give a back gain, 2,118 yards. Heisman runner-up. The, the foregone conclusion he's going to come out. But you can see Love, Love is different in many ways. Yeah, he says football, football is his happiness, my drive. But more than a game, I love the bonds that I've formed with my teammates, my brothers. It's what makes football so pure. And to me, th th this guy could be the face of the sport. He should be the face of the sport for what he does on the field and what he does off the field. I mean, he's a classic example of what everybody tries to achieve we talked about ways of getting the ball to him in space getting away from that pit and he walked it downfield and going up to make the catch out of bounds is Colby Parkinson oh, DB plays that ball and you can see that he's putting it up in the air where Parkinson at 6 7 can go up and make the play over Lenore and he was out of bounds as he was running the route without being pushed so he therefore is ineligible to be able to make the play Love stays in the game. No pressure. And a throw down the seam and a tough catch is made at midfield. That's another one of those big tight ends, Caden Smith. Yeah, and he uses his body here. Nick Pickett is back here, the safety. He's going to try to make a play, but you see how it's tough to get to the football because of Caden Smith. It's 6'5", 252 pounds. And again, see where the ball is located? The location by Costello, he understands I've got an advantage with that big tight end. I'm going to put it up high. Nothing the safety picket could do about it. Bryce Love has set out wide to the right. Scarlett is the back. Both quarterbacks have made big plays on third and long already tonight. From the pocket, zip short. It's Smith again. Second and two. Love. Pursuit in the backfield and knocked down for a loss. Kalata Apelu came in there. Apelu, these linebackers are coming downhill in a hurry. And it's Jordan Scott again right here. He's able to get in the backfield. But watch the linebacker, Apelu, 39, immediately get downhill to be able to take away Bryce Love. Take the angle away. Remember we talked about Bryce Love, his patience, his ability to accelerate. When a linebacker's coming at you like that, it's very tough to admit middle linebacker. Third and four. They're crowding the line, showing pressure. And now back out. And Costello thought about scrambling, and now he'll be knocked down. A short loss. Ugo Amadi, the safety, stopped him. And here comes the putt team. Amadi and also Apello gets in there as well. Costello does a good job of kind of sliding in the pocket. There's the safety that goes up in the air, but he doesn't give up on the play. Amadi eventually gets to him. Boy, you better keep an eye out for 39 Apello. He is flying right now on this Oregon defense. He's one of my favorite players in this team. Such a tremendous leader. Bailey will try to pin him deep. Ugo is the punt returner. It's a very high kick, and he immediately signals for a fair catch and takes it at the 12-yard line. A dynamic opening drive for Justin Herbert. He shows the skills. First the run here, and then the arm strength. And yeah, the big arm, great throw downfield. He loves to take the vertical shots and the seams to Dylan Mitchell. And this is what I love. This Oregon team's been challenged by their coaches to be more physical. How about Jacob Breeland, the tight end? He'll take that challenge on, blows it up, and opens an easy running lane for Tony Brooks-James. There's a first down for Brooks James. When your head coach is a former offensive lineman, you know you're going to have a, a physical front, and they've remade this offensive line at Oregon. Here's our Chick-fil-A impact players. D Dylan Mitchell's already made plays. Tony Brooks James scores a touchdown. Sean Martin's going to have to make plays against the run. 27, and Alfieri 
32, when they get a chance to rush the quarterback, you'll see him move around, blitz from the outside, and also twist him back into the inside. He's got to pressure Herbert when he can. Now Pierre coming off the left edge. He's now out in coverage as Herbert rolls, and he will keep and get knocked out of bounds. Joey Alfreire, a guy from Portland, who's very, very pumped up to play in this game. He grew up hating the Ducks because both his parents went to Oregon State, athletes there. Yeah. Read that story this week that he showed up at a game day with some buddies as an Oregon recruit. Got out there at 6 in the morning and went and ended up going to the game and saw Stanford actually play pretty well that night at Austin and fell in love with the Cardinal that night. That stings when you, you come to visit Oregon and end up a Stanford fan right. at the end of the night. Right. They need three. And C.J. Verdell, number 34, their big physical back is in there. But Herbert looking to throw for it. A dark, accurate throw. First down. Catch in traffic by Johnny Johnson, the sophomore. Really tight coverage here. There's nowhere to necessarily go with the ball. But eventually he decides to squeeze it in and get that ball thrown out there. Outside linebacker Jordan Fox in pretty good position. But the velocity on that throw and the accuracy prevented Fox from making a play. Throw on the money, but good concentration by Johnson because Fox made a swipe with his arm right as the ball was getting there. And they hand it off inside to C.J. Verdell. Such a different look to the backfield. Royce Freeman was a four-year star here. He dominated. Now they got a whole bunch of guys rotating in. Yeah. I mean, you'll see up to five guys possibly depending on the situation. They kind of go with the hot hand. I love talking to Oregon. You know, we, we used to come in here every year with Chip Kelly and the speed and they said we're not going away from the speed, but Mario Cristobal says we're going to become more physical. We want to be known as a physical team at the line of scrimmage. Free play. Yep. Herbert takes a shot underneath. There's your guy Breland, the tight end, doing what he's best known for, catching passes out near midfield, so they'll decline the penalty. I, I love how he's mixing up what you could call snap counts, but it's really his clap. Sometimes it's a, a freeze call. Defense, number 51. Not coming to decline. First down. Yeah. yeah, it's a freeze call where he does kind of a, a dummy call with a clap, and he's, again, trying to get Stanford to... to, to tip their hand and show where that pressure might be coming from also get them to jump off sides and what it does is it makes that Stanford front slow down a little bit and be a little cautious which is exactly what his own offense alignment want and Kirk this offense is much crisper against better competition than they were in the first three games they have come out on fire Herbert five for five they show pressure up the middle handoff around the end and busting free is Verdell watch the linebacker right here right here both these linebackers are concerned about 10 possibly running with the football and when you're a threat and he carried out his fake so well it makes it so much easier for the back at that time Verdell to pick up great yards they fake it to Verdell. Herbert rolling, wanted to look downfield, chased, and will be sacked way back at the 43 by Okariki. This time, it's just a relentless attitude. Watch 20 in the middle, trying to diagnose, see what's happening, and now he's coming in. The, and the coverage downfield took away any of the threats. They want to go downfield vertically, and it's taken away by the safeties. And that gives Okariki a chance to get in there. But great effort not giving up on that play. Huge yeah. loss, by the way. Hey. Herbert's got to throw that one away. 13-yard loss. He's so savvy, so tough to fool Okariki. And Cristobal knew controlling him was going to be the key to beating this Stanford defense. Second and 23. And the Cardinal pressure again. It's a screen dumped off to Verdell, who was able to dive back to the 45-yard line. He's made some breathtaking throws in the first three games this season. Needs a big play here on third and 14. And the shot down the seam, right on cue. And a first down in the red zone. Man, that is just a frozen rope. Rose and rope, two high safeties, so you know that the weakness of the defense is right in the middle. It's exactly what he sees. Nice time. That it allows him to throw in rhythm because this takes a while to be able to allow your receiver Mitchell to get downfield that long. But Stanford opened up the middle of the field and Herbert recognizes it, had the time from the offensive line and makes the throw. Third and long, no problem. They got 28 and third and fourth. That with his arm strength. If you protect him, he's going to make the throw. You still got it on the keeper. And he'll just slide down after a nice game. That's what they want him to do. He's a monster. He can deliver a shot, but you got to protect him. There's really no depth the behind him. have 159 yards threatening.
Seven zip at the end of one. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Verdell is the back. They fake it to him. Herbert keeps again and gets near first down yardage at the Wickham eight. And added 20 pounds in eight months, did Herbert. Bust quick hitter to Verdell. Not much room there. Now, he missed the key part of the schedule last year. He broke his collarbone against Cal and wasn't in there for a lot of it. And so you keep in mind that one and four record with Braxton Burmeister was thrown basically as a third stringer. But look at the production with him through 11 games. Yeah, there are a lot of people that right now maybe are watching 10 for the first time. But look what he did last year. 50 points a game when he was playing. Now he just looks even more impressive this year. It's early in the year and early in this game, but so much more command to this offense. Cardinal crowding the line. They tried to draw the Ducks O line into a mistake. And see now that that, that delay call, that dummy call. You got to hurry. Now he looks over. Yeah, Mario Cristobal is going to call the timeout. But ideally, he's able to look over and you see where that blitz is coming from, and then you get the right check and becomes a little bit of a cat and mouse game. I still got to pinch myself because just a couple years ago I was in the stands watching. Think about those four seats up there in section 12, all the games. Came here with my family. Just thankful and, and glad to be practicing out on that field and thankful for all the memories I've made with the teammates. Think about living his dream. He was a three sport athlete at, at Sheldon High School here in Eugene, but not heavily recruited. Montana State, Nevada, those are the schools coming after him before Oregon said, you know what, we'll, we'll give you a chance. Give a shot. Yeah. Give you a shot. I think it's worked out well for both he and Oregon. Section 12 right across from, from us. Parents hooked him up. About 40 yard line seats growing up here in Eugene. Not bad. Not Football bad. was important. I mean, his <laughs> yeah. grandpa was a receiver here in the 60s. Second and goal after the timeout. Verdell is still in the backfield. Herbert looking left. Buying time. Flips it high and complete. Over the hands of Verdell. Coverage sack. There is no foul for offensive pass interference. The ball was touched behind the line of scrimmage. Again, you got the true freshman left tackle, Panay Sewell, the steady hand next to him, Shane Lemieux, Jake Hansen, the fine center, Dallas Warmack, Chance's younger brother, mm -hmm. yeah. Alabama. There's, there's. Transferred in. Playing very well so far. Pistol formation. This is one of the new wrinkles this year. And now, once again, a timeout is taken. Mario Cristobal was five yards on the field against some frustration. They'll spend another timeout, but he knows this is a crucial series. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mario Cristobal, offensive lineman, Jimmy Johnson, Miami era team. He was just mauling people. And I, I covered the Keens a lot in those years. They always had Cristobal out there because he was a cerebral guy, but on the field, he was a mauler. Look at, the, look at this next block. We're talking about dominating a D lineman, turn and just. 72 just mauling him right there. He closed out his career, the Miami team that was shocked by Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Dabo Sweeney yeah. was the receiver in that Crimson Tide team. Was at Rutgers for a while, was at Miami. FIU head coach, it didn't work out great. Then some crucial years studying what Nick Saban does at Alabama. And he, he really talked to us openly about what he learned his time there in Tuscaloosa and what he's brought here to Eugene, whether it's the recruiting. Or yeah, first thing, get great, great players. Well, yeah, well, and they are. They're, 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 they're ranked as high as you can hope for in, uh, in recruiting right now. So he's getting great players. Need about eight or nine or ten classes in a row uh, to get where Alabama That's is. That's the tide but, formula, right? Yeah, that and the development this, and the, uh, the strength coach. Let's see. After this cat and mouse game, as you, as you correctly called it, but the Ducks got here on third and goal. They've spread the field with four receivers. Verdell is in the pistol. Red comes in motion. Herbert fires. Touchdown! Going down low was Breeland, the tight end. Just nothing that Alameen Murphy can do. Easy coverage. The timing between Herbert and his tight end Breland just perfect and the ball is thrown down low and away from the defender Stanford allowed two touchdowns combined in their first three games Ducks got two in the first 17 minutes and sliding the extra point through is Adam 
stack. So he blocks, set up the first touchdown, catches the second one, your guy, Breland. Yeah, Breland's having a great night, but the guy who's really having a huge night is Justin Herbert. See, that ball is thrown before Breland even turns to make the look for the football. The Ducks off to a great start. In five years ago, it was a top five matchup. Oregon fell behind 26 0 and tried to rally, but fell short. Hope the Ducks in shape. Puddles is getting a workout over here. This this is, you said it, Kirk. This kind of feels like an old time Oregon. Different looking offense, but yeah, but I'm talking about how explosive they are and, and how you come here to Austin Stadium. It was a dangerous thing to have to deal with. Stanford needs an answer. Well, they tried to put Rice Love back at kickoff to spark things, and Oregon spotted that Emerson kicked away from him. So Darian Maddox makes a nice return, and here's how they oh, smothered Love as a running back. These linebackers are doing a great job of coming downhill. Troy Dye, Appello, a really good job here. But look at the defensive line consuming the lineman, not letting him get up. And look at that closing speed by Appello. This is going to continue. What I've been impressed with here in the early going is Stanford, you think, the defenses have to get the safeties involved, get eight or nine guys up close to stop that big line in Bryce Love. So far, Oregon hasn't had to do that. The D-line's doing their job eating up those blocks. The linebackers are flying downhill. I think Stanford's going to have to start to throw more to set up their running game. It's been tough up front. They haven't looked for J.J. arcega Whiteside. Their fine receiver has been so tough to stop this season. They haven't targeted him yet. And this is love in the heavy traffic, and the Ducks will swim up for another loss. And that's a wall. You're running into a wall there. You want to talk about setting an edge? Watch Jelks right here set the edge. It's a good job by Jalen Jelks taking on that big lineman and holding his spot, forcing Bryce Love to come back underneath. And now you've got another three or four green jerseys there able to chase him down for a short game, or actually a loss. 15 times this season already, Love has been trapped behind the line or held to no gain. That's a huge departure from the success last season. Costello. When in doubt, go to the tight end. That's Caden Smith and the big fella out near midfield. It's a first down, third I'm, catch already. I'm with you. It's like a security blanket. Where's 82? Where is he? He's just going to go. Look, nobody's, nobody's stopping him at the line of scrimmage. Costello almost started to bail because of the pressure, but eventually he gets it off. And I love to see a tight end work after the catch. And that's exactly what Smith at 6'5", 252 does. 40-pound mismatch against that linebacker who was trying to cover him. And so it's here. It's a, it's a tough, tough assignment to deal with these tight ends. Love. Again, penetration, and he'll be dropped right at the beginning of the drive. With the way this defense is playing, the field is still tilted in favor of the Ducks and, and playing in Austin. I, I think the passing game is going to have to provide a spark here. It's tough to run into that the teeth of that defense. And our Sega Whiteside, the receiver, not in the game on second and ten. They flip it to Osiris St. Brown, and he is hammered right at the line there by Thomas Graham. Bucks are saying you get the football. Well, what Thomas Graham does is he gets off of the block. Ball is thrown quickly. And the job that he does there, getting off of Michael Wilson, who's a true freshman. Look at Michael Wilson trying to make a block. Graham just sheds him and then is able to make that play. Dorian Maddox now takes a turn. Junior from Maryland is the back. Costello steps up, delivers down the field, and the catch is made by Arcega Whiteside. Finally, they involve their best receiver, and it's a huge conversion inside the 10. Yeah, and he's he gets one-on-one -on -one matchup, so you're going to see the tight end occupy the safety, and that opens up the big receiver, Arcega Whiteside, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a matchup he'll take every time against Lenore. Remember, he's 5'11", and he puts it right on the money there for him to catch it in stride and pick up more yards. Love in the eye formation. Gets it. Heavy traffic trapped behind the line again. Justin Hollins came around the edge. Just too slow developing. Thomas Graham's 5'11. So Stanford had 40 yard completion to Arcega Whiteside on third and 10. Set him up and then 
think JJ wins the jump ball battle in the end zone. Costello in the drive, Kirk, four for four, 66 yards. Bailey's got a strong leg. We're not going to see many kickoff returns tonight. You can just you can forget about that. Booms it out of the end zone. Uh, this is going to be the challenge for the Oregon defense tonight is dealing with the size and the strength and just the strength in his hands of Arcega Whiteside. Remember, 6'3", 225 pounds. He's not 6'3", 180, 225. No. His mom played for Appalachian State. Carol Valerie is, is the all-time leading scorer. Still is in the Southern Conference. She was a low post player. Joaquin comes from Spain. He was kind of a, a slasher, a two guard. He had two uncles that represented Spain in the Olympics in basketball. So he thought he thought it was hoops first, but well, then he, he that, started to get that, noticed by football. That hoops offers. background is working out for him in those jump balls. He looks very comfortable timing it up and going up. Man, they play practice it, as you know, yeah. incredibly diligently every day. So Herbert, who's got the hot hand, flips it far side. Dylan Mitchell, and this dude continues to just be incredibly accurate. Herbert's a great quarterback to begin with, but if you don't do something to affect his rhythm, it, it's it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, it, it is set, it's a seven-on-seven seven drill. And right now, Stanford's not doing a lot to affect him. What should Lance Anderson and calls the defense well, do? I mean, he's going to try to do what he can to mix up the looks. But this offense right now is clicking because of what their plan is to stretch you vertically with the shots. Big offensive line that clearly is more physical for Mario Cristobal. Quarterback that's in command. I mean, they're, they're one step ahead of your pressure. They're one step ahead of whatever you think you need to do to mix it up because they have a quarterback right now that's just seeing the field and making quick decisions. Herbert, 9 of 10. Looking to throw again. Has time and delivers underneath to Mitchell again. He's about a half yard short. He's short, but it's, yeah, it's three seconds, four seconds, five seconds back in that backfield where he's not getting anybody in his face. Verdell stays in. Effective short yardage back. And they hand it to him as a flag. Riddell was stacked up. I think they're going to spot it for first down yardage, but. Lined up offside. Offside, defense, number 10. Five yard penalty results in the first down. It's Jordan Fox, the linebacker, so they will take the penalty and move into Cardinal territory with the first down. He's down at the bottom. And remember, he's in it tonight for two hill. He's just lined up across the line of scrimmage. Riddell has a crease. C.J. Verdell headed to the house, stuck score for a third time. That old offensive lineman head coach is well, pumped up. I was going to say, Mario, or <laughs> Mario Cristobal is an offensive line guy. He gets more fired up when a play like that opens up than when his quarterback flips one 50 yards for a touchdown. His two guards that time, Shane Lemieux and Dallas Warmack, perfection on pulling around to open that hole up for Burdell. 48 yards for the guy that's considered the more physical back, but he shows the Jets, and the Cardinal defense is just getting gashed. Watch the two guards pull around. Great blocks, and then a poor angle by Bumpkamp. And there's the speed by Verdell. Those linemen, look at them. They were challenged by their coaches this offseason. We've got to be more physical. Euphoria in Eugene for the moment. You cannot be more impressive on offense than Oregon has been so far. Drives of 82, 88, and 75 yards. Averaging 10 yards a play against a defense that was very stout. The first three games. Scarlett. Knocked down at the 15. And the special teams also playing well for Oregon. Let me tell you something. If, if Old Dominion can beat Virginia Tech after losing the Liberty 52 to 7 or wherever it was early in the year, yeah. I think anything, anything is possible in college football. Sad news that Josh Jackson appeared to be seriously injured in that game for the Hokies as well. Love. It's around right end, but yardage has been hard to find. He's out across the 20. That's a good first down game. 345 to be uh, exact <laughs> with you there, Chris. But uh, <laughs> David Shaw, the winningest Stanford coach in uh, school history with 76 wins. Who is second on that list? I'm going to buzz in for this. I, I might be two for two. I'm going to say Pop Warner. 
I think he, I think he broke Pop Warner's record for it became the all-time winningest coach. You got to go back a few years for that. Love into traffic. It'll set up third and three. How'd I do, Bear? My, my back to back weeks? Uh, you have correctly answered oh, tonight's Aflac trivia question. Pop Warner, 71 wins in his great coaching career uh, coming at Stanford. You're right, going See, way now, back. Now you're in history. You're, you're, a, stu you're yes. a student yes. of the game, so I, I would expect you to get that. Now Bear's going to raise the bar next week. He's going back to odd six. I, knew, I, knew, no I, idea. I, just, I just beat you on the buzzer that time. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. That was, I think you might have used that as a. Hundred dollar question back in the old day, game day days. See what Shaw can do. They need they need two yards here to keep the drive going. Marcel trying to get the tight end. Smith shifted around. And from the pocket has to back pedal. Ball batted up in the air and falls to the turf. Ugo Amadi came on the blitz to the Ducks force another punt. He gets really right into the face of Bryce Love, who's trying to pick him up on a delayed blitz and he's not the tallest safety you're going to see they list him at 5 10 but look at him at the bottom number seven gets right at bryce love he's not going to be able to get in there costello kind of like a sidearm delivery which has allows him to go up and he got right into the face and knocks that ball away good play again by the leader of this defense yeah that's got six career interceptions he scored Defensive touchdowns very comfortable with the ball in his hand, which is why they have him back on the punt return team But that's a bomb fast start for this guy. And you, you showed the Mel Kuyper board of, of draft eligible quarterbacks Herbert is a junior hasn't played a whole lot of football But you can see why he's at the top of the list and the, the whole world can see that yeah I think a lot of people that have not seen him play are Sitting back and really have to be impressed with his performance can you not be? Brooks James picks his way and almost breaks a tackle for a huge gain. Tackle at the 28. But, but see, this is what makes this this offense so dynamic is it's not just Herbert and all these wide receivers. They they still are reminding this front from Stanford that they better respect the running game, as we saw in the previous drive where they ripped a big gain for a touchdown. So when you have to respect that part of this offense, it just opens up everything else on the outside for Herbert to throw the ball. You go pressure off the edge. That was an adjustment from the defense, Kirk, and Herbert has to eat it and take a short loss. Uh, he saw the blitz. He recognized it. Alfieri is able to come in and get, finally get to him, but what, what prevented him from throwing, because he saw it, he wanted to go to a quick side adjust, but give credit to Stanford. Malik Antoine came down quickly and took away his potential receiver. Now he's been lethal on the third down so far. No four or four. He's had three first down completions. They need about three and a half yards here. And for the third time, Cristobal will spend a timeout with the play clock winding down. Inside of five minutes to halftime as the Ducks try to keep the drive going. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Actually, it's seven. First penalty for Oregon. Not showing blitz. Now they bring a fifth rusher, but plenty of time for Herbert. Accurate throw. Dylan Mitchell. First down. They didn't get near him. No, not only did they not get near him, the receivers are able to come off the line of scrimmage freely. Look to the far right, 13. Dylan Mitchell. Nobody challenges him. And he just works to the spot. The first down marker turns around. Pretty easy. Boom. Gets a seed thrown right to his jaw. Makes the play. Mitchell limped off. He's got six catches tonight. Pretty nice. 126. When you're receiving, you turn and the ball hits you right in the forehead. That's fun. Play action on first down. Jalen Red. Knocked down hard. Looking at Mitchell over there. Targeted six times and he's made catch all six times. This is on that first down play. A lot of bodies colliding there. Hopefully he'll be okay and get back in that lineup for Oregon. As you said, Chris, big night so far for him. It's a receiving core plagued by drops last year and also in the first three games, but not tonight. Oh, there all kinds of room for Herbert to scramble. Makes the cut. Still rumbling. Look at the big fella. The wheels down inside the third. He got a nice block from the receiver, Johnson, too. Again, you can't lose contain. Alfieri does. Outside rusher. He, he moves to the inside and frees up 
the outside pick, picked up nicely look at the recognition right away Alfieri moved to the inside left tackle Sewell just pushes him in there and what I love about the quarterback Herbert he doesn't hesitate immediately saw that running lane he's not looking to run out of bounds he's picking up yards Hand up up the middle. Even when you make the play fake to the wrong side as he did, you still end up making a huge gain. <laughs> right. You turn the hand off to the right, and Brooks James had come to the left, and then, uh, oh well. With those long strides, he just covers a lot of ground. Like, a lot of quarterbacks, yeah, <laughs> makes a mistake there. That's okay. It could have been the back making a mistake. I like mistake. the cut here. Look at this cut. But that's what I'm saying. Typically, you see a guy go down, he slides, he goes out of bounds. No, no, he's, he's looking for big yards. Verdell to the right, busts loose into the secondary again. This Oregon power running game starting to flex. You watch Stanford and Oregon play, you think it's going to be Stanford controlling the line of scrimmage and moving people off the ball. This first half, it's been all Oregon. Not just Herbert, not just the skill, but we have to continue to give the five guys up front. A lot of love. They are pushing Stanford around at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback keeper again makes a little cut and slide down. That time they they held their edge and didn't let Herbert get around Trying the corner. Catch him off guard. Not maybe expecting ten to keep it on that zone read. Thirteen Look. runs, thirteen passes, and that. That combination is what has Stanford really struggling right now. It's an experienced veteran Stanford defense. They have not often been toyed with like this in their careers. Verdell hit hard. That time they rallied to the football and meet him right at the line of scrimmage. Well, that time they walked down their safeties. You see five right here and three. You've got safeties coming way down. To assist those linebackers, they just outnumbered them. That's one way not to let Oregon blow you off the ball is to put nine guys at the line of scrimmage. Kariki got there in a hurry. You know, it's a it's a veteran team. I don't think Stanford, in my mind, is a terribly emotional team, and they have just not been able to match the energy at all of Oregon or, or cope with this energized environment. They, they're sort of stuck in second gear here. Yeah, when you when you come into Austin Stadium, you think about when when the heyday of Chip Kelly and Marcus Mariota when they were really rolling. You know, since 2015, after they got to the national championship, it's been a tough stretch. A Pac-12 games, they're 13 and 14 since 2015. Six home, uh, they've lost six home games in that stretch. That's as many as in the previous eight years combined. So this has not been the intimidating environment that it used to be. Tonight, they're trying to start a new era. Yeah, that's why this is such a key game. They want to show their back. Third and 11. Can they keep the hot hand going on third down? The snap is rolled back, and Herbert just has to fall down. That time, Jake Hansen didn't really give the quarterback a chance. Stanford finally gets a stop on third down. They get a stop, and they use a, a second timeout. It's one of the, I think, the only mistake I can recall Oregon making. Hansen rolls the ball back there. I don't know if the ball slipped or he got confused with thinking the quarterback's under center, which we haven't seen all night, but ball rolls back he's lucky that Herbert's able to hold on to that ball now Oregon is using Adam stack as their field goal kicker he was their punter a year ago but he has never in his college career attempted a kick of any time no no field goals PATs until tonight three for three PAT so it's his first career field goal attempt out the first few games injured This is from 38 yards. And looks like he's been doing his whole life. Knocks it right through. So Oregon finally kept out of the end. And love. Chance to make a play on special teams. Hold your breath when number 20's got the football. Gets out across the 35. The season Taco Bell celebrating student sections and passion to fans like these by awarding best student section of the year. The Ducks on the national watch list here. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school competes. Finally getting back to school here. Both these schools are on the quarter system. So the first day of classes Monday, both at Stanford and Oregon. 
And it makes a difference to have the, all the students in the stands, too. Stanford out of timeouts. They used them as Oregon's in their last drive on defense. Love saves in a pass protection, and Trenton Irwin, the big, tall receiver, makes his first catch of the night. Timeouts, choosing to spend that on defense. Our Sega White side, the big tight ends, got to find matchups. Costello zips it across the middle. It's in the middle of the field, so a first down. The clock will stop momentarily. Smith, another catch. Yeah, nice job getting the ball to Caden Smith, who's defended there by Troy Dye. He's been the top target so far. Four catches for the junior from Texas. Two deep safeties. Hard to get the ball thrown downfield. Ducks rush for Costello has time, but nobody open, and the ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. They've done that a couple of times. Even though JJ's six five, they're getting their hands up in his face. Yeah, and and he didn't have anybody open. He starts to panic. He steps up in the pocket, which you want to do. Then he starts to think about Bryce Love and. You know, he's nobody open downfield. Everybody covered. And again, Oregon, nice job of getting their hands up. It was the big fella, Jordan Scott. But those two high safeties, middle of the field, behind the linebackers, could be an area he tries to get the ball thrown to. Delayed handoff, and Love is hit hard. And he's going to bounce right near the marker. How about a spot a little short inside of a minute? It's an idea how physical he can be as a runner. He got hit and somehow came out of the end of that pile for another four yards. Added 10, 12 pounds of muscle in the offseason. Told me to his lower body. You saw the strength that time. Third and one. Love another delayed handoff. He'll barrel forward and dive for a first down. The clock will stop momentarily. The clock stops 37 seconds. Getting points, Kirk, feels important because the Ducks are going to get the ball to start the second half. Costello pressured it. Ball is loose. And it'll be jumped on way back at the 45. But again, no timeouts. The clock ticking down. Justin Hollins with the strip sack. And that should do it for the half. And he goes right around Walker Little. Costello had no idea that he's able to come around. Just beats him. He gets that left hand up and smacks it down. And they come up with a big sack. And as you said, there is no time left because of their out of timeouts. Great effort there by Justin, Justin Hollins, the senior. What a performance from the Ducks. We said there's mystery in this crisp air here. Is Oregon back as a contender? After 30 minutes, they sure look like it. Yeah. Pointed to the fact that Justin Herbert took a sack in one play and then came right back and made that huge completion to Mitchell, and that we've just kind of seen him be courageous and fight through everything. Now, he did say going into the locker room, now it's 0 0. We have to maintain physicality against the Stanford team if we want to continue to hold on to this lead. Out. Maria Cristobal told us one of the things he learned from Saban you have to attack aggressively these big games. You can't. You play, can't play cautious, can't play not to lose. And they have been attacking aggressively downfield as Mitchell, who's back in the game, makes a seventh catch tonight. But well, this takes the arm strength. Watch him get this ball over top of the safety right there, Malik Antoine. I mean, and now you've got another safety, Buckham, coming downhill. You better throw that on a line, which is exactly what he did there. 21 yards. Bang straight ahead for a short game. You said they haven't been able to affect him. What what could Lance Anderson do? What what's the potential idea to get in Herbert's head? Well, you got you've got to commit some numbers. You've got to try to blitz him. You've got to try to come after him. The problem is you're you're taking a chance. It's it's a little bit out of your comfort zone. It's not necessarily who you are or what you do, but you've got to do something to try to shake him up with some blitzing. And here comes a, a blitz right now. It looks like now they're backing out of it. Play action. Herbert rolls. Looks short. Now fires another dart across the middle. That's Jalen Red going down low. First down. You know, for a group of receivers, when you talk to the coaches, then nobody's really become the guy. It's a big group of wide receivers. But I think tonight we're seeing this wide receiving core just as, a, as an entire group with Mitchell and Red and Johnson. Boy, they've, got a, they've got some talent on the edge. Verdell, short gain. It's a bunch of receivers that are not natural pass catchers. They're thin, so they move guys from different positions, yep. guys who played different positions in high school, and Herbert just found all of them. Yeah, it's unacceptable to uh, the short throw to the left there. He missed one there. <laughs> Got to get that fixed. But the rest of it, pretty much like a seven-on-seven seven, uh, drill. 
you know, the teammates and coaches, they call him Herbie. And I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. There's only one Herbie in college football. Only one. But here, he's he's the dude. He's he's Herbie and Eugene. I, I bow Give down to him. Okay. Here, yeah, absolutely. You okay with that? You okay with that? <laughs> Second and seven. He's just doing whatever he wants. Verdell around right now. Look at him lower. Physical sounding collision there. Debo got him a yard short of the marker. Following those guards around and right there. Big collision with Debo, the corner who came up to make that stop. Give him credit. He kept him from getting that first down, but that was a major collision. <laughs> now it's a third and comfortable one yard. Verdell, he's been the busiest back tonight, and he powers for first down yardage. The surge at the line of scrimmage is remarkable. I mean, it's just remarkable. I'm just not used to watching Oregon and Stanford and watching the green and the cold pushing back the Stanford offensive line and defensive line. No, it's the Cristobal stamp on this program in his first year as head coach. And you're not used to seeing 330 pounders up there. They used to have lighter, more mobile offensive linemen. So a total change in philosophy. And he's going to continue to, I think, be able to pull in some of the top O-line recruits in the country. When the O-line coach is a head coach, it speaks to those big fellas. We're working on Brooks James there for Dell to be dragged down right at the line of scrimmage there. Dell again that time they fly off the edge. There's one answer bring the corner and the ball is out Looks like Dylan Jackson has the takeaway for the Cardinal Oh, we just talked about you asked me. What can you do? I said you got to bring some pressure you got to pick your spots and bring pressure and Adebo is exactly what he's able to do there that into the boundary the corner blitz and Verdell is a young player I don't know if that the contact to the hit knocked that ball out yeah, he put his head actually held on to is when he started to go down the ball came out Dylan Jackson jumps on top of it. Ruling a fumble being reviewed watch the left knee of Verdell hits the ground right there Just grazes the ground before they hit and before the ball comes out So that's what David Lambros the replay official in the Pac-12 is taking a look at right yeah, now I mean, you, you don't understand what's going on here is Stanford's offense is out there They're just waiting for the TV timeout to be over. There's about to be chaos in this stadium because everyone's wondering why the ball isn't being snapped. Stanford's offense is out there. Oregon's defense. Now the coaches just got win from up, probably upstairs. They're going crazy saying, hey, we got a chance here. He was down. He was down. So they're going to get the ball back. This stadium's about to erupt because they have no idea. But that hasn't been a problem. There's a <laughs> the, uh, the strength coach, the mustachioed man, the, the high energy one and kind of the the Scott Cochran mold. He was at Georgia first when Mark Rick I'm was there you right now, man. Uh, Aaron Feld is changing along with Mario Cristobal on the staff. He's the strength coach. Talk about bringing the blueprint. You bring the recruits in, you turn them over After the strength you coach. After review, determine that the runner's left is. knee was down. Fired the ball coming loose. The ball, ball will be worked back to Stanford for the third down. He means Oregon, but but. That's the replay review. So the Oregon offense knew that was going to be the case. They were out there raising Travis Dye, the true freshman tailback. The first time we've seen him in there in the pistol. And Stanford is showing pressure. Yeah, they're showing those linebackers. You got a true freshman in pass protection. And he is flushed and sacked. That's a problem. He put Dye in there, Kirk, for the first time tonight, and he did not make the block on Alfieri. And Jordan Fox came in from behind. He had a, a good job. They're showing both linebackers. They end up dropping here, bringing pressure here, and that's where the sack comes from the outside with Jordan Fox. Good job of taking up those linemen and the speed of Fox getting around the true freshman left tackle Sewell. So Stanford, they don't get the turnover. But on third down, they come up with one of the first times we've seen Herbert under pressure, so they will get the ball back. So Tom Snee, he's one of the two punters you have. He's an Aussie, and he's like a rugby punt guy, and he does his job. The man from the Melbourne area. Well, Kirk, you go from an energized atmosphere in Eugene to Happy Valley College game day built by the Home Depot. We'll be there to set up the Ohio State-Penn State collision, a top-10 matchup. So Stanford... Finally gets the stop, but they're pinned back at the six. When will Bryce Love get loose? 
And not on this play as a flag and a false start in the left side of the offensive line. False start. Offense, number 72. Half an instance to the goal. Still first down. He's the young guy in a very veteran offensive line. Students are right down there in this corner. They are making a whole lot of noise. This is a, a celebratory atmosphere right now. I was going to say, this is the loudest part of the stadium where they happen to be snapping the football. Cristobal wanted them to break the all-time Oxford Stadium decibel record, which was 127 11 years ago. We'll, we'll have Maria check on that. Love, three yards deep in the end zone, works hard and is still working hard. Look at him fight for yardage out across the 10. See the defensive lineman down on the field as we check the AP rankings. Justin Folio helped off that Oregon defensive line. It's loud again on second and five. Love trying to bounce it, cuts it back. Every yard is hard earned tonight. He's going to be stopped just short of the marker there by Nick Pickett. Need to pick up one here. Move the sticks. Threatening 100 DB at the moment. Confusion on the Stanford sideline. The offensive line looking to the sideline saying, we need to play, we need personnel. Not the kind of play you want to hurry. Scarlett is the back. He's got it, but he doesn't have the first down. That play was doomed from the start. And Drayden Carlberg in for Baliu, who just was helped off, made the play. And Carl Burke's right here. You're going to see Lyman pulling, and he's able to shoot through a gap, get low, and affect the, uh, the, the handoff where Scarlett is not able to get a yard. So Van confusion Kirk. from the very beginning, from the sideline, getting the play in, getting the right personnel. And now Amadi to get the punt from Bailey. It is a low line drive, and Amadi's got a chance. Ugo Amadi circled back into the arms of a tackler. Now this big offensive line from Oregon has done a great job from the first drive. This ended their first drive just dominating up front, pushing people around. How about this? Oregon, two tights, giving Stanford some of their own medicine. And again, pushing people around. And this is a big touchdown. Watch the guards pull around, pick up nice blocks on the linebackers. Look at the hole that the freshman Burnell has to run through. Takes that all the way to the house. So we've been talking a lot about Justin Herbert, deservingly so. But that offensive line has been physical up front. Yeah, they've had a two to one ratio of run to pass here. It's the 30th running play of the night, and CJ Burdell muscles his way for a nice first down game. Aerial coverage on this beautiful night provided by Goodyear. From the end zone to the uprights, nothing comes between hard work and a goal. Goodyear, more driven. Gorgeous sunset here in the Willamette Valley. As you know, it's a beautiful Pinot Noir country. Oh, absolutely. Post range here. Yeah. I got up at four morning for game day so no pinot noir for you last no night. sir no i enjoyed it for you i'm sure you did second and six herbert from the pocket and fires it's just pitch and catch i mean dylan mitchell has been wide open all night in front of big cushions combination of not being able to get to him that time he got the ball out quickly and then the receiver not being challenged off the line of scrimmage he runs about an eight to ten yard route turns around by the time he turns balls right on top of him and an easy pitch and catch for this Oregon offense. It's been kind of a theme we've seen all night long. No matter which hash the ball is snapped in, you got to defend the entire width of the field against this guy. Verdell fires for a short game here. And Debo made the stop. Yeah, and, and incidentally, that's their entire scheme is stretching you left to right. And when you have a quarterback like Herbert who can make, as you say, every throw, they're on the right hash, far left is in play. I mean, he's going to make that throw, 15, 20-yard outcut that every NFL scout wants to see. He's going to make that throw easy. So puts a lot of stress on the secondary and the safeties. Big time. They are stressed tonight. Stressed and stretched. Riddell again a short game. Seven for seven. Had that incompletion you referenced, which is just unacceptable. And now has reeled off eight consecutive completions. You know, the other thing that's really helped him tonight is the success they've had on first and ten. Quite the opposite of Stanford, who's been struggling just a, averaging at about a yard 
on first and ten. We've seen Oregon tonight right around six yards, setting up very manageable second and third downs. There's a 26th snap for the Ducks in Cardinal territory. The field has been tilted all night. Now Herbert again wide open as Mitchell DB slipped that time. Mitchell uncontested off the line of scrimmage runs this route right here. Watch the timing with the quarterback. One, two, three, foot in the ground, balls out. Boom. You do that over and over and over in the offseason. You do it in your sleep. Look at that tight spiral. Poor Dylan Mitchell. He couldn't get his hands up. That ball hit him right in the chest. On the reverse. Jalen Red. For the pylon. Touchdown. They use it as deception. They really have not given the football to receivers in the run play until tonight. And that one worked out well. I love the nonchalant little pitch from Herbert. We'll show it to you in a second after the extra point. Instead of handing it off, he just kind of casually just kind of flips it underhand like, go ahead, take it. Jalen Red, one of those guys who was not a receiver in high school, but he has blazing speed watch him turn the corner after the watch the so. pit watch a little bit there you go kid <laughs> <laughs> and there's the speed holders out there nice block there by Breland and then it's just speed it's old school Oregon there speed to the corner it's been a tough night for Frank Buncombe the safety has not been prepared for the speed of these ball carriers another rough angle taken and he just gets the pylon right in the foot we got to see the progressive pylon cam because it got kicked and boom as the ball crosses the plane before the foot lands out of bounds We asked for it here it is you about to get a cleat in your face <laughs> Jalen red scores his fourth touchdown of the season first three receiving This receiving core what a satisfying night for them. Yeah, Herbert's been so accurate. The catches haven't been all that tough, but they've been dropping easy balls a lot last year and a lot in the first three yeah, games. But that's not been the story tonight. I think they're just trying to see where the ball is when his foot hits that pylon. And a couple of I don't know good looks at it. I don't know if there's anything there that would allow them to be able to take that touchdown off the board. Dave Katai is at a quiet night. He's waving at you. No, he thinks this will We're in his territory stand. too out here. I know. We, we kept finally come to a Pac-12 game where Dave was the supervisor. After review, it was determined the runner's left foot touched out of bounds prior to crossing the goal line. The ball be placed at the one-yard line. First and goal. Well, take it back. David Lambros, let, let's check this again. When his foot hits out of bounds, where is the football? At the one? I don't see no, 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 What are, I don't know. We have no idea what they're looking, how they would see that. The foot is clearly in bounds there. The left foot is the one that hit the pylon. That's, he's in bounds until he hits the pylon. Every time we watch games on the bus and somebody makes a controversial call, I yell at Dave, Dave, what are you doing? What, what the heck are you doing with these calls? <laughs> Like every any of any call I come to you. Look, look at the formation here. You got, you got a whole bunch of jumbo dudes in the backfield. Oh, they got the big fell. Absolutely. Fumble. The ball is loose. And how huge was that replay review? Herbert the got Ducks, it back. I think. They get it back, but it's going to be back outside the 10 yard line. He got too cute. Everything's been working. And now you got a couple defense alignment in the game. And you could see it looked like. I think the right guard there, Dallas Warmack, kicked the ball. Well, it's also the first carry to that for Cyrus Habibi Likio. So a, a brand new back comes in acute formation, and the handoff not cleanly executed. We'll see if that how about bothers the offense at all. How about Herbert getting back on the ball? That looked like all the white jerseys are right there. Give Herbert a chance, maybe throw another touchdown pass. Verdell in the pistol. Second and goal after all that. Burdell's got the ball. He's got space, and he hammers down inside the five. How about how physical he runs? Malik Antoine, 5'11", 192-pound safety, number three, came up to make a play. Isn't he, he run bigger than 201? 
They're close. They're right at the one yard line. They lose the yards. Herbert picks it up, and then a snap by Hanson again goes over the head of Herbert, and Alfieri is there to not just get on the ball, but a heads up play with the way their offense has looked tonight. He picks that ball up and uses his speed to get to the end zone. Alfieri is from Portland. Jesuit High is the powerhouse program up there. He has four career takeaways, all of them against Oregon schools. The Beavers and the Tucks. Wow. So the simplest things, Kirk, is snap. That's what's gone wrong for this offense suddenly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, last two plays, poor execution. They thought they had a touchdown. Here's the first one. This will be talked about quite often. I mean, where the ball is when he hits the pylon, I guess, is the question. And we'll yeah. talk to Dave Kataya in a second about that. Well, let's bring in Dave. Before we look at the scoop and score, he took this touchdown off the board. He hits the pylon there, Dave. The ball is short of the goal line at that point. Re remember by rule, that pylon's out of bounds. We'll wait till this is done, but that pylon's out of bounds. When he touches that pylon, it's the position of the ball right. when that pylon was touched, and that ball is short when the pylon is touched. Remember, the pylon is out of bounds. So upon looking at it, you, you think it was the correct overrule. And here's here's the dramatic turn. All of a sudden, it's a 10-point game. Yeah, just like that. I mean, you, you, you're thinking about this is about to be 31 to 7. 31 to 7. They take the touchdown off the board. And all of a sudden, you need a veteran to make a play. And Alfieri does that for them. Down 10. Killed the momentum on top of it. Now you got to ask the defense to go out and make another play. The bad snap was one thing. You see the athleticism of Alfieri. He's such a, he's a limber, very flexible linebacker, athletic guy. And to take it 80 yards when the Stanford offense has struggled is enormous. Is that a turning point or just a temporary setback for this Ducks offense? Travis Dye, the freshman back, is in there. All of a sudden, there's a little hush here. Yeah. This is a ball game now. And Dye, his big brother Troy is a linebacker on this team, a short first down gain. Michael Williams, defensive tackle, stopped him. Let's see if this gives the Stanford defense some new energy, Kirk. Their head has been spinning all night. Their head's been spinning, and they've been on their heels because of the attack of the Oregon offense. So after all of the, the, the last few plays, it's a really big series for both these teams right now. Herbert, plenty of time, flips it up underneath, and that's Die out of the backfield, who has slung down physically. Ducks need three. Herbert is pressured a bit, but doesn't matter. He fires it across, incomplete. In and out of the hands there of Johnson. Looks like a Debo who's in coverage there. Does he get his hand on that and knock it away from Johnson? Ball is thrown again pretty well. I think maybe the ground maybe knocked that ball out. See if he gets a hand on that. Now I think the ground eventually knocks the ball loose. As his knee was hitting, see if they buzz down and take a look at that one. The Oregon punt team is out there. Snee, the Aussie, gets it away. And a fair catch made for. Him. So Stanford, after the scoop and score, gets a three and out, and we we'll get the football. Back. Thirty-one to seven to now twenty-four to fourteen, and the crowd is not nearly as involved as they were. Stanford has an opportunity. KJ Costello and Brian Love have an opportunity. Let's see what they do with it. It's been the Ducks in the comfort zone since the early minutes of this football game. No longer. Bryce Love is it his time to bust one loose. His 53 yards rushing on 15 carries. It's a first down throw, and they fire it short. Colby Parkinson, the big tight end, moves the sticks to the 46. Big fella at 6'7", 240. I thought we might see him more involved. Protecting the corners with the safeties over top. Costello, another first down throw. Looks downfield for Irwin, who comes back and makes the catch. A downfield back shoulder fade in front of Graham. A Modi they end up bringing on the blitz. See seven right there. That creates a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And
Holland takes away the underneath throw, and then the corner Thomas Graham never turns his body, never gets his eyes turned back to find the ball, and Irwin locates it early, does a good job of adjusting back to pick up some big yards. 32 yards. What a turnaround here in the third quarter. Final 30 seconds of the third period. Love through the middle. Bryce Love hitting the end zone. Just dances in. Finally, they signal touchdown. And the Cardinal have come storming back. How about this, Chris? This time, he doesn't wait on 54, Nick Wilson. He cuts in front of him, says, I've been waiting on you all night. It's slowing me down. He gets out in front of him, well-designed on the right side. And now they're going to take a peek to see where the ball was when he goes for the pylon. Amadi was shoving him out. Here's the progressive pylon cam. The ball, did it cross outside of that sideline before he got in the end zone? We're going to have another review here. Uh, you're not going to be able to tell from that, that vantage point. Tries to tap that toe in bounds, kind of goes over that corner of the end zone. And they will take a look at where the football was. And the official there. The key is here. He has to touch some part of his body in the end zone to get that goal line to extend out of bounds. At this point, I don't see anything to reverse this call. It's not clear, but let's see if any part of his body touches in the end zone. It does not. Therefore, he does not get the goal line extended out of bounds. He's got to bring it over the pylon or on the inside side of the pylon. Look at the presence of mind, too. He, he, he gets his foot so that he doesn't touch the pylon to put himself out of bounds in midair. I mean, imagine thinking about that in that move. After review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands as called. 234 consecutive PATs made by Stanford. We got a ball game, folks. Late third quarter, three-point lead. You know, we, you know, we came into this game, you and I, and I think everybody, we're going to learn a lot more about Stanford and Oregon. And now heading into this fourth quarter, we're really going to find out what these two teams are made out of. Bailey figures to just boot this out of the end zone, as he almost always does. Die is going to take a knee. What has happened here? This Oregon team looked like right here. They're going to go up 31 to 7. They called this a touchdown on the field. Kicks the pylon. Ball was just to the outside. So the awful snap and Alfier. Look at the athletic play to scoop that up and race 80 yards. Goes to speed and then they get that Oregon offense off the field and Bryce Love with that touchdown. Don't forget the 32-yard pass to Irwin, where the corner Graham never found the football and. Just like that. It's just happened. Blink of an eye. It's 24-21. Die, the freshman, stays in the game. This place has got quiet all of a sudden. Herbert fires far side. Winning down. Just go out there to Dylan Mitchell, who hasn't really been covered all night. Threw it in front of Adebo. So, we are headed to the fourth quarter here. Tradition here at Eugene. They play shout at the end of the third quarter in the campus where... Animal House was filmed. 40th anniversary of that movie. Otter in game day. Yeah, it's great. the Ducks. Oh, it was a lot of fun. The Ducks pick looked safe a while ago. But Stanford has roared back. Beginning of the final quarter. And it's Die on a second down carry. All of a sudden, huge energy in the Stanford defense. That's Jordan Fox with the hard hit. It'll be third down. Doing a really good job of getting the outside pressure, getting upfield with Wade Perry that time, the big defensive tackle. But Jordan Fox attacking and getting off blocks and knifing in from the outside. So those yards where they were bouncing and running the ball to the perimeter are no longer there against this Stanford defense. Now, Dylan Mitchell, number 13, is in the slot to the right. He comes in motion now. He's been the reliable target for Herbert in situations like this. Herbert steps up. He's going to be trapped and knocked down. Sacked. Watch the linebacker right here. Does a really good job. Ukariki takes away the target. Breland takes away the underneath route of Schooler. Nowhere to go. That's just great awareness of the down and distance by Ukariki. Taking away those shorter routes. Tom Snee on the punt, and he'll roll out to the right and kick a high one down there. And the true freshman makes a fair catch at the 35-yard line. Consecutive three and outs 
forced by that Cardinal defense. They get the football back. Good field position. Down only three. And Bryce Love, we're still waiting on a home run ball from number 20. Scored the touchdown last time. Has not busted one of those patented long runs yet. They feed him on first down. Just feel like he's due. Costello from the pocket delivers across the middle and it's Smith making a catch the big tight end finally a wrestle down inside the 40 You gotta love the design of this play You'll see a big tight end as this play develops coming underneath Parkinson occupies this tight end right here occupies Die the middle linebacker which brings him up and then opens up a nice passing lane over top of him well designed and a great read and delivery there by KJ Costello Javon Holland the True freshman corner made the tackle, a 22-yard gain. And suddenly it's Oregon's defense that needs to make a play to regain momentum. Crowd trying to get involved again. Love cuts it back, gets a block from the quarterback, gets the edge, and motors down I mean, after about a seven-yard gain. You hold on, you hold your breath. Thomas Graham, give him credit. It's one-on-one -on -one out there. He gets a little shake. Give him credit for at least slowing down Bryce Love because if he does it, if he gets around him right there and gives him the corner, it's trouble. At least he slowed him down, and eventually Justin Hollins forces him out of bounds. Otherwise, that's 15-20 minimum. Got to hurry this one. Just get it off. And from the pocket, Costello lofts it looking for Love in a wheel route, but the Ducks' defense was all over it. They had... A linebacker and a D lineman on him. You, Mike Black, your spotter, everybody. Oregon's defense, everybody, when they saw two backs in the backfield, knew look out for the wheel route, look out for a running back out of the backfield. They got two guys running with them. Oh, okay. Jalen Jelks, the defensive lineman down there running in coverage. It's Scarlett in. Very slow out. And Scarlett will earn. Close to first town yard. Just see if they're going to run in and spot this. I think he's short. Yeah, I think yeah. he's short by about a half a yard. Remember we talked about Oregon has been more physical at the line of scrimmage? They better be this time. The big fella in the middle, 34, Jordan Scott. Let's see if he can make a play in the middle against the big boys from Stanford. <laughs> you got two guards in the backfield. Handoff. No! He didn't get there! All oh, those big bodies! Oh, those pounds. They couldn't move the pile. And the Ducks defense makes a huge stop. I just said Jordan Scott. He's either offsides or he's jumped the snap count. Wait till you see how quickly he gets off the ball. If you're watching at home, you think somebody may have jumped. Watch the big man we just talked about right here. Right there. I mean, there's nothing that you can do when a defensive lineman on fourth and short gets off that quickly. Jalen Jelks got a long arm on the ball carry around the edge there, too. Chafe in the center. Perquette is out, and Chafe is in, and, and he snaps that ball, and there's nothing you can do. We just said, we challenged Jordan Scott. Make a play, and he sure did. By the Stanford comeback. Now we'll see if Oregon's offense can get back on track. Consecutive three and outs. They fake it to die. Herbert rolls out, and that just flips it. They left Mitchell alone. They wouldn't play the quarterback run, and Herbert made a pay, and they're in Cardinal territory. There's confusion there when Dylan Mitchell went in motion. Adebo runs with him, 11, and then he kind of starts to point to him like somebody pick him up. Nobody picks him up. Blown coverage, flips it out there, and then he has all kinds of room after the catch across midfield. And the Ducks, after moving the sticks, trying to play with some tempo. Die as a crease, but it closes down very quickly. Could not run through the physical arm tackle there. Okariki, fit 20s also getting involved in there, eating up some of those blocks. Try to stay fresh for this fourth quarter. Travis Die takes off and the speed evident there as he quickly motored near the marker with the 39. I think between all the backs. What I've seen tonight, because they've got about four or five to get chances, C.J. Verdell and Travis Dye, you talk about hitting a hole downhill in a hurry. They do that. Part of that's youth, and, you know, sometimes you want them to 
maybe be a little more patient, but with the design of these plays, they need to hit it downhill and attack that Stanford defense, which is what they've done. The Dye brothers making plays, then at an offense and defense. Looked about Troy, and a flag is down at the snap here. Oregon has not been penalized but one time Holding tonight until now. Offense, number 55, 10 yard penalty. We play first down. It's Jake Hansen, who's had a tough night with some snap, kills that momentum. And handed off to Die, and he's smothered. And that's going to be second and very long. Bunk him on the tackle. Second and 18. Herbert has good protection, flips it off short. And the catch is made by Johnny Johnson, is weaving to the secondary. Fights down inside the 35. It'll be third and five. Now. Really in field goal range for Adam Steck yet. Herbert fires into traffic. Doesn't matter. Diving catch is made. Brendan Schooler, who's coming back, he's been out injured. Going through the concussion protocol makes a catch. How about the location of this football? Pretty good coverage there by Adebo. Low and away. Look at this placement. Low and away where he can come back to it. If he doesn't put that ball there, that right arm of Adebo knocks that ball away. So Uncanny. Unbelievable. Great spot to be able to throw that ball exactly where it needed to be. 21 of 23 now, Herbert. Important first down. Cardinals swarm the backfield. Die had no chance. Leak either comes this way or this way. This time he actually reverses, goes the other way, and completely catches the center, Jake Hansen, by surprise. Based on their alignment, they were expecting Swan to move and slant and angle to the offense's right. Instead, a good call to throw that changeup, go the other way, and the line completely caught off guard. Herbert from the pocket goes underneath and the catch is made by Breland and the tight end down inside the 20. It'll be third and four. You know, when you have a big arm like Justin Herbert, you get into the crucial moment in the game. It's so easy to want to fire the ball downfield like he's done a lot tonight. But how about the patience and the poise letting those deeper routes go, letting Stanford take that away and just checking it down to guys that are on the move, hitting them in stride and letting them run after the catch. Die, the tailback split to the left here on third and four. It's a different look. Now he motions back in. They give it to him. And the freshman fights, but he doesn't have first down yardage. And now Kirk, a decision for Cristobal. Coach to win. Don't coach not to lose. Coach to win. He didn't hesitate for long. The offense is on the field. And they need less than a yard it's not the physical back Verdell it's die in the game going with quickness over power in this situation and a mix up and now the quarterback rolling around and Herbert flips it it's Mitchell Mitchell has a first down Mitchell has a touchdown Not like they drew it up, Kirk, but it worked. Hey, you know what, though? The threat of him running. It was a little sloppy as far as the handoff. I think it's because he sees pressure. But this right here, watching him get out here affects this. De these defenders, they start to come over towards him. He baits him to come to him. He knew all along where he wanted to go with that ball. But he sold it like he was going to run for the first down. And then he makes the throw. Let's check this out. Uh, the progressive pylon cam. They had one touchdown taken off the board. And this one looks like it'll come off the board as well as the knee hit. when the ball was being extended short of the goal line. That's They'll a, spot this inside the one. That's, yeah, that's almost all the way back out to the one yard line. A wild game three years ago. 900 yards in offense and a two point stop with 10 seconds to go. Preserving the win. Ball has been spotted at the one yard line, so not to ruin the suspense of Mike McCabe here, but I think the replay booth will take the touchdown off the board and give Oregon a first and goal. After review, it was determined the runner was short of the goal line down at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal for Oregon at the one yard line. No foregone conclusions given what happened the last time Oregon was in this situation in the third quarter. Yeah, not, not at all. And 
Burdell looks like he's going into the locker room. He's been a hard runner tonight for them. Last time they got a little bit cute down in this area and it backfired on them. Let's see if they just go run it right out of the pistol and run right downhill and challenge Stanford. And Cyrus Habibi Likia, who is part of that mishap, he's been their touchdown scorer, their short yardage guy. He's behind Herbert. He's got the football, and all he does is score touchdowns. Six carries this season, five touchdowns. And no more of that diamond formation craziness. Pistol, line it up, give it to the back, let him go right behind that line that's been doing a great job tonight. This is an Oregon team that was, they were rocked. They had been rattled by Stanford's comeback. They move it 70 yards, Kirk, and importantly, 11 plays and six minutes, 11 seconds to reclaim will be a double digit lead. Stack can make the PAT. Impressive. And left side of the line, watch your left guard, Lemieux, left tackle Sewell. Doing a good job. He runs right through the tackle of Sean Barton, the middle linebacker, but his good push up front. How, how can that big left tackle be 17 years old? It's impossible. 17. Mario Cristobal says that's my kind of football. The lead is 10, 439 to play as the Ducks score for the first time after halftime. And Emerson, let's see if he tries to boot it away from Bryce Love, who is standing back there. Nope, he's gonna have a go. Actually, <laughs> stepping in front of him was Scarlett. Bryce Love, not the regular kick returner, but Scarlett said, I'll take this one. He didn't get far. Urgency now. The Cardinal down two scores. And Costello. Down the seam. There's a man running free. Osiris St. Brown got between defenders exactly what they needed in the first play. Yeah, the exactly what you need. Well-conceived play. Boy, there's the speed. He's able to pull away from Thomas Graham, the top corner from Oregon. But the safety in the middle of the field, not there. Nick Pickett and Costello is able to make a perfect throw there on first and ten. They needed big yards, and they just picked them up. 49 of them. Costello steps up in the pocket, lofts down the middle, jump ball, and it's Smith again. The tight end out muscles the defender. When, when in doubt, you go to the big tight ends. Down the middle of the field, they've got two of them. This time it's Caden Smith, who's had a great night tonight. Six receptions, 95 yards. And boy, in two plays in 37 seconds, they're right down inside the 15-yard line. Now you got that jump ball potential situation. Our Sega White side caught one earlier. And the big tight end is now at the bottom, Colby Parkinson at 6-7. Ducks. Got a flinch. They showed pressure crowding the line. And A.T. Hall is the right tackle. tackle Hall. Offense, number 75. You saw five-yard penalty. Still first down. Nate Herbert touched the center. That means, hey, let's go. Snap the ball, especially not to mention the clock's the, clock's the enemy right now. So it's easy to look at Hall and say, why did he jump? But I think the center that time affected that with the delayed snap to get it up. Costello looking that direction, lost it, end zone, touchdown, our Sega Whiteside again, and Stanford very much alive. Pickoff coming, 3-10 to go, and uh, Oregon sort of, they're sort of wary for the onside kick. Brooks James is back, but he's the only guy deep. They somehow sensed that something was coming, but uh, Toner just does what he does and boots it out there. All right, Kirk, let's show the, the fade technique of this Cardinal well, offense. First, watch the route. I mean, the, the route at the line of scrimmage right there. See the movement? Once you have a receiver that beats a defensive back so badly, that affects the quarterback and where he's going to throw the ball. So in that case, you don't need to throw it to the pylon, the back corner. You know, it's not a back shoulder fade. These quarterbacks from Stanford, Andrew Luck, Kevin Hogan, they make a determination of where to go with the ball based on their receivers and how they get off the line of scrimmage. They react to the defense's coverage. On the touchback, there was a flag. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the receiving team, number three. That penalty be half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, that's Johnny Johnson, and that mental mistake backs Stanford up. The poor field position. Maria? 
Well, Chris, coming into this matchup, Mario Cristobal knew that his team would be in for a fight. So what did he do? He showed him one of the universally known best fights of all time. It was the first meeting between Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward. In the ninth round is the video that he showed blow for blow. He wanted his team to know it's not about how many hits you take, how many times you fall down on the mat. It's about how many times you get back up. Ward won that matchup in a narrow decision, and Mario Cristobal hoping that his Oregon Ducks win this one. To love uh, Chip Kelly used to love Irish Mickey where I was more of an Arturo Gotti guy I actually attended the second fight which was just as brutal as that one was so now 310 to go for Dell who was checked out by the elect trainers is back in the game and Herbert's pump picking looking downfield looking for his favorite target tonight and the catch is made now Dylan Mitchell's had a lot of easy catches Kirk that was a tough one beautifully made uh, Debo with tight coverage Talking about Stanford and where they put their fades. How about this placement again? Back shoulder up high. Tough adjustment for the defensive back. And a great adjustment finding, locating the ball by Dylan Mitchell and getting his foot down. How about the call by Marcus Arroyo? And you talked about the aggressive approach from Cristobal. You don't play timid in these big games. Backed up after the penalty. A tough throw for his quarterback to get 23 yards on that play. They take it to Verdell. A flag is down. Herbert flips it. Once again, it's Mitchell. And he'll be finally corralled after a short gain. The penalty marker all the way across on the near side. Illegal shift. Offense. Five guard penalty. Replay first down. And you, you had the running back, C.J. Verdell, move from a pistol to the left of the quarterback. And before he could get set, you had Dylan Mitchell, who was in motion. So that's why they call the illegal shift. So Stanford's going to spend the time out here. Interesting. They've got three to work with. You want to try to use them on defense as they did in the first half. Preserve time for the offense. Pacific Life game summary. I tell you what, it's been an incredibly impressive performance by, by Herbert. Only two incompletions. They've scored three touchdowns on the ground. Three different running backs have scored. And for the receiver, Dylan Mitchell, one of the great receiving nights in Oregon history, 14 for 239. And with all the compliments we can give Oregon, you just have to at the same time say Stanford, they, they just kind of hung in there. Verdell is the back. Huge play. Quarterback keeper, good call, Kirk, and Herbert in the Cardinal territory for a crucial first down. And Stanford can stop the clock just one more time. And not just tonight, but the rest of this season in the Pac-12. Watch Jordan Fox sell out to come down because he's convinced that Verdell is going to get the football. Collapses down, and all they needed was for J Justin Herbert to be able to get to the corner and pick up about four yards, and he's easily able to do that. Ryan Bay, the tight end, pulled around to make the block. And now, clock running inside of two minutes. Burdell is still the back, and Shaw can't do a whole lot about the clock now. Just stop it once. They use almost all the play clock, and Burdell off the left side runs hard and picks up seven on first down. Now do you, do you hold the timeout and do you spend it after a game like that? He may save it. Yeah, you got to hold on to it. Burdell is it's a young freshman. It's just gaining more and more confidence throughout this game. They're trying to find out which one of these four or five backs is going to emerge. 34 is throwing his hat in the ring. He wants to be the guy. 100-yard game. He has outrushed Bryce Love. On 19 carries, 112 and a touchdown. They can still run 12 more seconds on the play clock before snap. They could take it well under a minute here. Verdell again. And he'll work hard to move the step. Ball's out. The ball came out. A fumble recovered by Stanford. Stanford has the ball with 51 seconds left. Sean Barton came up with it. Can you believe it? One of the things that can happen when you're fighting for those yards is you got to be smart and know when to get down. And so while you love to see him fighting for those yards, the last thing you can do is lose the football. 
And if he goes down, he's fine. He's, well, I think Barton actually gets his hand on the ball. Let's say no. It's another defender. It's Williams who came in there and punched the ball loose. Yeah. And then the ball's on the ground definitely before he touches. And then it's Sean Barton, one of the leaders of this defense, and ends up jumping on top of it. The way this second half has gone, you're just thinking, if you're an Oregon fan, let's just kill the clock. After the first down by Herbert on the run, you basically could take three knees and the game's over. You're right, though. Young back there fighting for yardage, loses the ball. They're reviewing this. I don't think there's anything that's going to cause the call to be changed. Oregon, a 500-yard night, but a couple of crucial fumbles here in the second half. After review, the ruling of a fumble and a recovery by the defense is confirmed. So the first was an 80-yard scoop and score by Alfieri. This one, when the game was all but one, gives Stanford life from the 40. Little did Mario Cristobal know that that fight that Maria talked about that he showed his team would be so relevant to this game tonight with 51 seconds remaining. But maybe for the other side. <laughs> we'll see how it finishes. So from the 40-yard line to give Jet Toner a chance, they're going to have to move the ball about uh, 25 yards realistically minimum. Costello switches over his two receivers, Irwin and Arcega Whiteside. Arcega Whiteside to the left. Costello against a four-man rush. Pressure as he throws, and it's incomplete. Smith could not fight back to the football, but that time Carlberg, the backup end, got in the quarterback's face. He, he couldn't get a throw on it because of Carlberg closing in on him. He just couldn't step into the throw and get anything on it. With that formation, they're just trying to open up the middle of the field and trying to get the tight ends to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the safety, Amadi. This time, better protection. Incomplete, though. Broken up. Tried to get it to Arcega Whiteside, and Graham yeah, made the play. Third down. You don't see David Shaw get fired up very often, but he was pretty fired up on that play. He felt Graham got in there a little bit too early. 42 seconds left. I still think you work the middle of the field with Caden Smith. The big tight end, 82. He's got to win a one-on-one -on -one battle. He's your guy. He's got to make a play right here. Two plays to make 10 yards, and... Keep hope alive for Stanford. Costello. Clean pocket. Strike. First down. Parkinson. They're in Oregon territory. You got it. One of the other tight ends. Caden Smith is taken away. Opens it up for Parkinson. Again, a one-on-one -on -one battle. The tight ends are very tough to match up with because of their size. They don't spend the timeout. Clock running inside of 30. They need 10 yards or so for field goal range. Costello underneath catch made Arcega Whiteside fighting clear finally bumped out inside the 30 they're in field goal range with 18 seconds Chris that's big time there Thomas Graham has a chance he's just got to make a tackle there how about the effort by Arcega Whiteside to come out of that move puts his foot in the ground gets to the outside and gives him a chance to get out of bounds to stop that clock you're thinking touchdown right now if you're KJ Costello so we've got the timeout to work with. Plenty of time on the play clock. Costello looks for Love, and Bryce Love, well covered out of the backfield. He's not going to get first down. You've got to fire the ball right into the ground. you got to fire it. you got to hurry. you got to fire it. Better get some urgency to you. No urgency. Five seconds to go. And they finally, they Fine, finally call the timeout. They weren't going to get the spike off. No, I think K.J. Costello is looking worried about the spot. And David Shaw from the sideline, they held on to that last timeout. It's able to use it. I think you're right, though. The quarterback was thinking touchdown, not field goal, and a good job to corral Bryce Love. If he gets the first down, they stop the clock momentarily to move the chains, probably get another play in. Yeah, you probably get one shot to the end zone before you would attempt the field goal. But Good year providing aerial coverage. Keep pushing day in and day out on the field and on tires you can trust to help you go the distance. Good year. More driven. So Jet Toner is the junior kicker from Hawaii. We're a career... He's been very, very reliable. 25 of 31. Hasn't attempted a field goal tonight. But you usually feel good about a veteran kicker in this situation. And Stanford to try to force overtime after being on the ropes big time in the third quarter. 
37 yards. To give us some bonus football at Oxen Stadium tonight. And Oregon will spend the timeout, try to ice the kicker. No, I think flags came out. Substitution, defense, 12 players in formation, five-yard penalty, still second down. Now they yeah, now they'll now they'll ice him. And yeah, they've got three of them. 32 yards after the penalty to tie the game. Toner. Coolly knocks it through as the scoreboard reads triple zero, and we will have overtime in Austin. You get the Cardinal the Ducks together, Kirk. I love them, man. Like this. You don't have bread, I do. We're good. Let's keep going. <laughs> I do, but who cares? <laughs> Stanford had just one timeout to go. The game was seemed to be safely within Oregon's grasp. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the overtime period. If you win the toss, you have three choices: offense, defense, or which end of the field. Stanford, you're the visiting team. It's your decision again. Go ahead and make your choice now. Heads or tails? Stanford calls heads. It's the tails. You won the toss. What's your okay, choice? So Stanford's going to get the football first. Okay. Well, Oregon has won the toss, and they'll be starting on defense. Well, Oregon had, had the lead. It seemed comfortable. This place was rocking. Then the miscues, and it started with the simple stuff. The fumble on the goal line, and then all of a sudden the center was having trouble snapping the ball. Alfieri picks this up. I mean, it could have been 31-7 instead. 24 to 14, and the miscues continue. This is a fumble late when they're trying to just kill the clock. Game is over. Gives the ball back to Stanford. 12 men on the field. Makes it just a little bit easier for them to have the potential game-tying field goal. And eventually Toner puts it through, so. He was going to make that one anyway, though. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Oregon just, they're going to look back at this game. There's so much good about it, but they definitely helped Stanford get back in the game to be in this position to go into overtime, and now they're just going to try to find a way to win it in overtime. Meanwhile, Stanford, as we said, kept their poise, didn't get down too much, and Castell's got that big wristband, Kirk, with all that. It's a complex offense. There's a lot on the quarterback and on the center to call protections, and, and you, you got to feel like, you know, they'll, They'll like their chances in that fade game when they get down in this territory. They typically do. Talked about the comparisons to a big boxing fight here. We're in, the, we're in the 16th round now. Interesting formation here without the bigger receivers in the game, Arcega Whitehead. Love from the eye. Gets the football. And they go to their superstar tailback, and he's knocked down after a two-yard gain. But Jardon Scott is a handful in the middle, even into overtime. The big fella at 330 pounds, number 34, just pushing Stanford back into the backfield. Here now, now they bring the two tight ball court, too. I, I bet. I bet. But he just, in, in Autzen Stadium, in front of this crowd, just routinely smacked that ball over to himself and caught it in the end zone for the first touchdown in the overtime period. All that sand volleyball is paying off for him tonight. They rarely take a, a catch in the field of play and run it in. You know, all of their touchdown receptions last year, every one of them was caught in the end zone. They didn't run a single one in from the field of play. Now, they do have one earlier this year, but that's a very typical Stanford touchdown. Ducks fans are... are they, they, they give it they up? Give it? Come on, the offense has got a chance here. Yeah. Well, this is that. a test. You know, this is a test of of Herbert's leadership now as well. He's been skillful all night. All of a sudden, his team is down for the first time. Travis Dye is the back. Got to be careful with those snaps. Any miscue can end the game. Throw for the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Dylan Mitchell, who was covered over there by Adebo. Well, I'm surprised we didn't see a, a flag here on Adebo, who's a very good player at 6'1", 190. And typically, when you don't get your head turned around to the very last second, usually that's going to be a P.I. Adebo, at the last second, tries to get his head turned around, but he's got his hands on the receiver, Mitchell. I'm just shocked they didn't call that one. Well, actually hit off Adebo's shoulder pads. So no P.I. call, second and oh. ten. Three-man rush, plenty of time. Flipped off underneath. 
Johnny Johnson. Physical play. He's down at the 10 yard line. First down. Little guy popping the pads. And they rushed three and dropped eight. And all eight were back at about 10 to 12 yards or deeper. We saw that at the end of regulation. And Herbert had to check it down and hope that they could run for the first down yards after the catch. And that's exactly what they did again. Totally different approach from Stanford when they get down close. Quarterback's got it rolling out, still rolling, and just fires down. There was nothing there. Breland was well covered, and the pressure came from Jordan Fox. It's so scary for these fans. You're on the edge of your seat. It's red in motion. Second and goal. Play clock at three. Herbert fires. End zone. Incomplete. Again, looking for Mitchell. Adebo was again in coverage. One-on-one, -on -one. and the reason it's one-on-one -on -one is because of the blitzes. They're trying to get after him. Remember we talked about affecting him? Noah Williams from the left almost gets to him, but that's a really good effort in coverage. We've seen Herbert make these throws all night. How about the length of a Debo? Are you kidding me to be able to get his arm extended and get a hand on that ball? Otherwise, that's a tying touchdown. Third and goal. Two plays to get it. From the pocket, zipped again. The same matchup. He's looking for Mitchell, and the Debo breaks it up. No flag. No, not on this one. There were two incompletions in the entire game. He's had four in overtime. Yeah, I, I talked about the last one was interference. See his head right away. See his head right away get turned. Now he has. He's in position to be able to fight the, the receiver for the ball. He has just as much of a right as the receiver when he gets his head turned around. Comes down to this. After leading by as many as 17, Ducks must score on this play to force double overtime. And now a timeout taken. Oregon will spend the timeout. Cristobal was coasting along. This offense was in complete control. They couldn't be slowed down by Stanford. And all of a sudden, now you got to get 10 yards to avoid what would be a tough, tough home field loss. You know, you're not only as a head coach talking about X's and O's. You're trying to exude confidence to make your team feel that everything's fine. We got, we got them right where we want. That's what you're trying to do because they're feeding off of your body language, your facial expressions. And, and because this game has been so lopsided as most of the game in favoring Oregon now they find themselves fourth down 10 and they've got a score to be able to get this to a second overtime prayers from Costello for his defense it's been 14 years since Stanford has come from behind to win a ball game down 11 plus at halftime that's how long it's been can Herbert create some magic on fourth and goal Mitchell is to the right They rush four. Herbert, plenty of time. Throws across the middle. Batted up. Intercepted. And Stanford stages a stunning comeback victory at Autzen Stadium. Alameen Murphy on the pick to seal it. As the Ducks blow a 17-point lead. Chris Murphy makes the play for the interception. But how about Elijah Holder, the veteran? Big physical defensive back.